The first thing is, what do you want to specialize in? Do you want to specialize in neuropsychology? Do you want to specialize in health psychology? I ask those questions because if you can find a mentor who's already doing what you're doing, it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier because they're gonna help you navigate the pathways of internship, of postdoc, of board certification. I mean, they're, they're gonna just be a gem for you in terms of navigating those paths. What is up fam, welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. This channel is dedicated to all things psychology, wellness, and graduate school. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to find a mentor. In previous videos, we've talked about the importance of finding a mentor, but today we're actually gonna talk about some of the details and some of the things that you can do in terms of navigating that pathway into actually choosing a mentor. If you have not already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell for notifications for future videos that we'll do, and let's just jump right in. So here are a few tips to kind of go through in terms of choosing a mentor for yourself. The first thing is, what do you want to specialize in? Do you want to specialize in neuropsychology? Do you want to specialize in health psychology? I ask those questions because if you can find a mentor who's already doing what you're doing, it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier because they're gonna help you navigate the pathways of internship, of postdoc, of board certification. I mean, they're, they're gonna just be a gem for you in terms of navigating those paths. And honestly, all you have to do is pretty much follow the same path that they did to get to where you want to be. The second thing that I would do is that I would look into their bio. So what are some of the publications that they've put out? What are some of their research interests? And honestly, it might act as some sort of an interview, right? So if you meet them for the first time, you might be asking those questions in an interview type of way to see if their research interests, their, the things that they care about, the things that they are passionate about also aligns with your own personal and professional interest. One thing that I would ask them is what is their approach to mentorship? Do they like to meet with students once a month over coffee? Uh, do they like to just check in with students every semester? Do they like to just email students back and forth? You're gonna have a different style and approach to all of the professional mentors that are out there for you. And I think it's really important to get an idea of the contact, like how often are you actually going to connect with your mentor? The other thing, and this might be the most important thing, is that you wanna pay attention to the chemistry, right? Is there some form of professional chemistry between the both of you? Is it easy to talk to them? Are they approachable? Do they feel like, do you feel like they're invested in your professional growth? Uh, do you feel like they can help you? Do you feel like maybe you can even help them? Do you feel like you can see them as a, a really close peer in, in, in a colleague in the future? You know, what is some of the chemistry that is going on between you and that faculty member or that staff member? All right, so there you have it. Some of the tips and guidelines to navigating the pathway of choosing the right mentor for you. And here's the thing, I say these things because they have been incredibly beneficial for me. I would not be the type of clinician, student, researcher that I am today if it wasn't for the type of mentorship that was invested in me and given to me by my mentor. I think having a mentor or having some type of informal supervision as a clinician is so valuable. Even the most experienced psychologists don't know everything there is to know about mental health, don't know everything there is to know about certain diagnoses or certain conditions. And so we all need help. Uh, this, is, this is something that even though clinical psychology can feel a little bit more individualized, you know, you're really just working one-on-one -on -one with patients, it is communal in that the things that you do, the research that you put in, the work that you put in is can help somebody else. You know, it can help somebody else who is on the same path as you, all right? So hopefully that really gives you some tips, some advice, and some guidance in choosing the right mentor for you. If you have any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. If you have not already, please subscribe to the channel and I will see you all in the next video.